Ja, yeah, uh, Georg. I think I already introduced you last year. Uh, yeah, you're not do better this year. Yeah, I'm not going to do better that, that, than I did last year, I think. Um, Georg Greve is, um, is like Shane, one of those disgustingly innovative uh, people. Um, I see your bio says that you're a serial entrepreneur. Um, we all know you from, from, uh, from your FSFE days, and now you're an SME. Um, the last panel um, I promised uh, would look forward uh, a little bit and look at the kind of policy uh, environment that we, are, that we require in order to, to fully uh, capitalize on, on what openness and collaboration can, um, can bring for Europe. Um, and so some of those things were already raised um, in, in Glynn's panel, but um, the idea here is that we really, uh, we really open up, uh, look forward, uh, and come to uh, possibly with some more specific uh, suggestions for, for what the policymakers in the room uh, should be taking away from, from today. So, Georg. Thank you, Sachiko. Um, so I've, I've been around the circuit for a while, um, spent over a decade, by the way, in policy, and have the professional deformation to show for it as well. Um, but what I will try to do, since I don't want people to go crying into the drinks um, after the session, um, is make this slightly more uplifting, if possible, and sli slightly more concrete. Um, we have a very interesting panel here. I'm not going to go into these C CVs. You have all the bios in the uh, documentation. Um, but the idea here is to give you um, a bit of a concrete practitioner's view, um, if you will, as to how making it happen or perhaps how making open happen in the end. And um, so I'm very glad to have this illustrious panel to present with uh, Mr. Bart Bex, uh, Steve Croissant, then Ima Swan, and uh, Joël Lambiot. Um, and um, that, um, in fact, is also essentially the order in which we will go. We will go from the finance perspective over the knowledge sharing to the actual implementation on the ground as someone who makes it happen for their customers. And we're going to start with a couple of short presentations as before. And then um, we'll hopefully have a lively and energetic discussion to uh, you know, leave everyone with a positive outlook and a, an idea of what we can do to actually make sure that you know, this is not the last year of openness, uh, Holger Birken has said, but hopefully just uh, you know, the end of the beginning in a way. So Bart, would you please? Yeah, thank you. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. So I have to be the positive bringing dude. I'm sick, I'm hurting on my foot, but I'll still try to be uh, bring a perspective. So since I'm fairly new to the community here, I'll quickly uh, explain who I am. Who am I? Besides the fact that I ask myself regularly. Um, so I used to work at FNAC. It's a kind of a distribution company in France for um, uh, books, CDs, and technical products, which is funny enough, started by a couple of Marxist people, and they're still striving a little. Um, I then became CEO of Skynet, which in Belgium was, uh, or still is, I think, one of the leading ISPs in consumer and business space. We talked about uh, access in digital TV. I also used to run that. It's one of the first dig digital TV implementations, uh, which was Belcom TV. And then I ran uh, innovation, all new activities for the SBS group, which we sold then to a uh, ProSieben group in 2007. And then, uh, like uh, some, I uh, wanted to do what I did in the beginning, and so I wanted to be an entrepreneur. Um, I often uh, tell this line when I grow up, I want to be an entrepreneur, even if my wife always tells me I have to choose between either of them. Um, so I started uh, or co-founded or invested in, in 10 companies, which have all some kind of um, open element to them. Uh, Mobile Vikings is a, a, a virtual operator completely built on communities. Storify is a San Francisco-based company which uh, uses um, uh, social media to mash up and curate new kind of stories. They just got uh, the Global Innovation Award for journalism. It's very interesting. Uh, perspective on what we're doing and a couple of other companies. I'm also chairman of the board of IVBT, which is a Belgium 
organization which drives uh, innovation across universities, large organizations and startups, um, which is doing some interesting stuff. But what I mostly want to talk about is a company that I launched two years ago, which is called Sonic Angel. Sonic Angel is a crowdfunding platform where we um, uh, created a platform to uh, invest in young artists. So, um, uh, the, the big issue with, with music is kind of the same as with entrepreneurs, is that there was a lack of capital to fund them. And what happens if there's not a lot of payback on the large organizations, there's especially not a lot of money for what they call seed equity. And uh, the, the parallel between if it's a creative works or startups are, are fairly similar. So we launched it two years ago. We had quite some good fun in the beginning because the first one that we launched went immediately to the number one position with this album in Belgium, number three in Germany, number two in France, um, which also created good headlines because the product that we created was uh, you could buy kind of a share, we call it a fan share into an artist, it cost 10 euro, and for 10 euro you got a download of the album, a, a ticket entry for a concert and a proportional share of the profit, and for Tom, for 10 euro you got the album, so everybody was already uh, happy, uh, you got a uh, entrance to a, a concert ticket, so you're double happy and per 10 euro we did a payback of 34 euro per 10 euro, which made the financial newspaper here title best investment of the year, Tom Dice. Luckily the collapse of all the banks helped us in our marketing campaign. Um, we then uh, quickly also uh, extended it to, um, to film, to young uh, filmmakers. We have now a couple of them already in the Cannes Film Festival. Uh, it's quite amazing how quickly it's distributing. Um, and then we had uh, this guy helping us a little um, uh, since Obama in the US. I don't know if you followed it. He, uh, he had a 10-point economic plan. And one of his 10 points is that he said you have to stimulate crowdfunding because it enables a new kind of creativity and entrepreneurship. And that boomed the entire market. So you have now an uh, incredible amount of, of crowdfunding platforms. Um, and we are um, they're now implementing a rule that you can crowdfund, uh, that's one of the elements, uh, crowdfund until a million dollars. That's where they're going to in the US. And um, what's, I think, a, a very exciting project that which we are launching in a couple of weeks now, which we're gearing up, is called Angel.me, where we, where we will be applying crowdfunding uh, to startups, but not only crowdfunding, we'll also do access to capital and uh, support for entrepreneurs, and I'll quickly explain that. So crowdfunding is where you can invest and have equity in startups, so you take away the, the barrier to seek equity for startups, but it's not the end point. We'll uh, collaborate with banks and funds so that uh, sometimes they'll have an um, allocated budget. So for example, if you raise 100,000 euro via uh, via uh, crowdfunding, uh, another fund could allocate another 200,000 to it and a bank could see it as a funnel management to their loans. So it's a, an ecosystem around it and we're also building um, incubators around it because a lot of startups, uh, it's not only getting the good ID, the good people and, and uh, the right capital, it's also uh, scaling and, and